Okay, um, so today I'm going to show you how to set up the uh, driver software for a routing setup. Um, right now we can, uh, we're actually going to start from a basic generic um, setup file and we're going to open up one of those and I'm actually going to show you how to configure each individual setting um, so if you, if you end up without one of these for some reason um, you, can, you can start from scratch. But, so I'm going to open up just a basic plasma setup. Uh, I'm going to save that. And so we're actually going to configure a z-axis setup file from scratch. So we're going to go into our edit screen. We're going to start off on motor signals. We're going to make sure our z-axis is turned on right here. Um, we're going to go into our basic definition, make sure our z-axis is selected in, in the route there. Um, from the machine type, we're going to turn on router, and we're going to determine the max axis uh, movement that the axis can move, so seven and a half inches, which would be the recommended length for the Z. Um, we're going to check our drive parameters and make sure our gear ratios are correct. We're going to also check our feed rate ramping, um, which is very important. Uh, this is all the numbers from Z axis that we sell. Um, Uh, okay, and then so we want to make sure that in the import screen that we have this one is going to be turned on, and that was when we changed our in our basic definition the router setting. And then we're going to go to our preferences and viewports. Uh, X and Y is selected, which is our normal top view. Um, we're going to make sure our Z is turned on, and then I like to uh, also turn on the X Y Z. That is all that is optional, by the way. And we're going to say okay. I'm going to reset coordinates. And so now we have our Z axis, which is uh, going to show us the height of the bit. Uh, this is our XY top view uh, on the screen. This is our Z and our X and Y. Um, if you actually click in this with the left mouse button, hold down control, and with the right mouse button, you can actually pivot the screen, uh, which is really handy um, if you want to jump to a line or um, sh kind of show you where you're at in a sense of depth. Um, so we're going to start off uh, drawing up a part. This is actually going to be just a basic um, part I was working on, um, but I don't really like this setup on it, so I'm going to start again, or just start from basic. Um, all I'm really going to do is, is drop a circle in the center of this hole here. Um, the way I centered that was CE, as in center everything. Um, I'm going to arrange make path. And then I'm going to turn on my fill. So the idea that I want is that I'm actually going to mill this down, this whole outside piece, and have this piece uh, stick out. So it's basically just like a, a peg. It's going to slide into a, uh, a slot in a cabinet. So um, make sure our parts are selected. We're going to go to Machine, Create Toolpath, and I'm going to go to a Fill option. Now. In the fill type, I'm going to say S sweep no lift. Um, there's actually a lot of options in here. Um, this is actually going to make it go to one side, X and Y, or uh, X axis, without lifting up, drop down, and then continue over. If you say just S sweep, it'll actually uh, go to one end of it, lift up, go back to the front, drop down, and then uh, continue on milling. So from here, I'm going to determine my tool. I already have a half inch end mill. Uh, programmed in here, but you can select the type of mill um, if you want to program in there, the type of tool, um, determine the diameter of the bit, which is mine, the, ones I'm, uh, the one I'm using is a half an inch, and the height of the uh, bit, or the, uh, um, the cut height basically is uh, one and a half inch. So I'm going to close that, um, since I already have it configured, go uh, make sure half end mill selected, Make sure there's no lead in, and there it is. Uh, so that's actually going to be my toolpath for this uh, for this option here. Now I need to export my toolpath, which I'm going to go just show toolpaths only. It'll give me just the basic outline of where my bit's going to be. Uh, file export. I'm going to save this somewhere really uh, simple to remember, which is going to be on my desktop. I'm going to make sure my selected box is selected and toolpaths only. 
so I'm going to call this um, part number one. I'm going to say export. Now from the driver software, uh, just like you would with Plasma or any other uh, DXF, I'm going to go import DXF. I'm going to find my file, which I put it on the desktop. It's going to be part number one, and say OK. That's going to ask you to save the G code um, somewhere. Again, I'm going to save it on the desktop, but you may want to save this in another folder or another file. This is basically the hard copy of the coding, uh, which you can actually open up later. Um, once the configuration window comes up, we're going to input our feed rate, uh, which I want to keep at 70. The plunge feed rate, I'm going to put at 35, and this is going to be all dependent on the type of bit you're using, type of material. Um, there's actually a lot going into that. So my the piece of um, material that I'm using is a uh, half an inch, and I want to make two passes. Um, but I'm going to go uh, three. No, sorry. It's a three-quarter inch piece, so I'm going to say my my final down is half inch. Point five. So it's going to be negative half inch. That's the farthest I'm going to go down with my part, and my incremental depth is going to be a quarter. So it's going to take two passes at a quarter inch depth to reach a final half inch depth. I'm going to say OK. Everything looks. All right, uh, scaling's correct, speed's correct, and um, I don't need any G code. And select OK. And then now you have your depth with your part. So it's actually the first step is dropping down a quarter of an inch, and then go through the whole part, and then drop down another quarter of an inch, cut out the rest of it. Um, so this is actually going to take, we can actually turn our calculated runtime on. It's going to take two about two minutes to cut out. Uh, so from here we'll make sure our zero is set, and I'm going to say start. It's actually going to move up and cut the part out. If I wanted to, I can, when I'm checking it, I can turn the simulate off when not connected and have it go through the whole thing. And there you go. Um, so here's the uh, first video. Uh, put comments. Give me a call. Um, if you guys have any questions, be happy to answer them. All right. Thank you.